This tutorial is part of my plugin killer series where I show you how to add functionality to your WordPress site without using plugins. And in this tutorial, we're going to replace an array of plugins. They all fall into the category of snippets. And here's some examples. There's the Insert Headers and Footers plugin by WP Beginner. One million plus active installs. We don't need that anymore. The Woody Add Snippets. 80,000 active installs. Don't need that anymore. If we search for snippets plugins, there's code snippets, 300,000 plugins. There's there's some more on this page like HTML or insert HTML snippet, 30,000 installs. Header footer code manager, 100,000 installs. Google tag manager plugins, don't need this anymore. 400,000 installs, 800,000 installs for SiteKit, don't need that anymore. After you apply what I show you in this tutorial, Facebook Pixel plugins, the official one, 400,000 installs. Unofficial ones like this one, adding pixels to Google Analytics, 100,000 installs. You don't need any of these anymore after you learn and apply what I show you in this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments throughout this video, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. The most important component of this video you're going to find on the blog. There's a link to it in the description down below. It's going to look similar to this. The, the headline might be different. There's going to be an image up here, but it's going to look pretty much like this. And the code on here on this page is what you need. And I explain how the code works. There's various options for it. They're going to go through in this video. There's also links to WordPress documentation and help pages if you want to customize these even further, because you can customize a lot in these pieces of code. But even just the basics that are on this blog are all you need to replace all or most of those plugins that I showed you in the intro. So the first piece of code is right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this piece of code. And we're going to put this into the functions file of a child theme on our site. It is best to use a child theme because when the parent theme is updated, it does not overwrite child theme functionality. If you don't know what a child theme is, or you want to know how to make one, I have tutorials for that. Link to in the card up above and the description down below. So check out those tutorials if you need to. Child themes are very important for adding code to the functions file. Once you have a child theme created, you can head into your hosting account or log in via FTP to your site. Go to the site we're going to add the code to, in my case, wpspeedify.com. Double click on wp-content, double click on themes. And I have OceanWP installed here and the OceanWP child theme. Open the child theme, click on the functions file, click on edit. And now we can add code to our functions file. To do this, all we have to do is copy and paste the code that we just got from the blog. So I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm going to hit return a few times, paste that code in. And there it is. I'm just going to move this up on the page a little bit so I can see it better so the mic's not in the way. And this code needs to have some more code added to it. This has to be replaced with the actual JavaScript that we're adding. You can either put the script in here to replace these dots or replace all the JavaScript depending on where you get it from. You might do either because some JavaScript code will give you the script tags, including the JavaScript. Some don't. It really depends on your source. We're going to get ours from Google Analytics. So let's go to our analytics account. So here we are on the analytics account for WP Speedify. You want to open the analytics account for whatever website you're working on. Then click on admin in the bottom and then click on data streams. We're going to choose WP Speedify right here. Click on this arrow and then we're going to get the site tag right here. If your Google Analytics does not look like this, you might not have upgraded to version four. I have a tutorial on how to upgrade and why you want to upgrade to Google Analytics four in the card up above and the description down below. And from now on, anytime you build a brand new analytics property, you're going to use version four anyway. So it's good that we're doing version four for this video. And this is the JavaScript code. I'm just going to copy this. And now we're going to go back to our functions file. I'm going to select all of it because we have all the script tags that we need. We're just going to delete those script tags and paste in that code. We see the script tags right here and here, so we can get rid of the ones that were provided with the code. It's going to move this over a bit just for easier reading. There's some important things to remember with this code. The functions file is a PHP file, so we have these PHP tags. We're basically turning them off. So here, this is PHP being turned off. So everything above this is executing as PHP, 
everything below this is executing as PHP. Everything in the middle is not, because it's JavaScript. So this is going to allow us to insert this code where we want to onto our website. And you have to make sure that these things are here. They might look weird. This might look like a typo. It's not. This is also not a typo. You need to keep the code exactly as it is on the blog and just put your JavaScript in here. Just replace this line with your JavaScript and that's it. And now when I save this and then go out to our website, WP Speedify and refresh, and then look at the source code, just right click anywhere, click on view page source, and then search for this piece of code right here. Just copy that and then control F or command F inside the source code to open a little search box, paste that in, and we see our JavaScript being entered right here. And that's fantastic. That's exactly what we want. We have now replaced a snippet plugin. We don't need a plugin to add this to our website. We just added it using that piece of code that we have. Something important to note, right here it says WP underscore head. This means that the source code is being put into the head tag of the website. So if I scroll down, we're going to see a closing head tag right here. And our code is up here in the head tag. And when you are inserting code or copying it from certain websites, they're going to tell you where it has to go. The Google Analytics code usually has to go in the header, and that's where you put it. And so using the WP underscore head is how you get it in the header. If we go to the blog, we have some variations on this. We can also use WP underscore footer. This will put it right before the closing body tag. So if we just update this to footer, save it, go back to our source code, you can refresh the source code, and it'll refresh as the website would. This will disappear when I refresh. So let's refresh. That code just disappeared. If I do a search again for it, we find it is here. And if I scroll down past all these other scripts, clearly we're not the only script being put before the closing body tag. There's a lot of Elementor scripts in here that you'll notice which is why Elementor doesn't load as fast as it possibly could. because There's a lot of JavaScript being added by Elementor. So down here at the very bottom, we have the closing body tag. So we have this, which puts it before the closing body tag. There are also more options. On the blog, there's a link right here, which goes to the plugin API hooks page, gives you even more options for places to put the script. So depending on where you got to put it, you're going to change this little piece right here to put it in the right place. Generally, it's the head and the footer that you use most often, but there are some other options which you'll find by clicking this link. And these two pieces of code, this one and this one, will put the code on every single page, which is what you want for Google Analytics and Facebook Pixels and things like that. But what if you want code just on specific pages? You can use this piece of code right here. So this piece of code will add to the head of the website, so we have WP underscore head. And we have inside of here, it's the simple if statement. And this if statement will allow you to say, if the page is a specific page, then put the code in. And for our example, I'm just going to use the same Google Analytics code. I'm just going to copy this, put it into our functions file. Let's paste that a little lower. Cut our analytics code and place it right here. And then just delete this. So now this is going to be put in a page with a specific ID. Your page IDs can be found inside of your WordPress dashboard. So if I go back into my dashboard, and page doesn't mean it has to be a page. It could also be a post. It just means a, a page on the site, basically. If we hover over edit, we see a link appear in the bottom left corner of the website that says inside the link post equals 72. Or if we click on this link, we see up here post equals 72. 72 is the ID of this about us page. So if I come back to our code here and I enter 72, and click on save, and then come back out here and refresh, and go in the source code and refresh as well. And we search for this code, oh, lost it. We search for this code, and this is the source for the home page. It's no longer here, zero, zero. But if we navigate to the about page and look at the source code here, search for this piece of code, we see it is here. It's now only included on this page. You can add multiple pages as well. Just add a pipe character, 
and you add another ID. Let's say 53, for example. I'm just pulling off the top of my head, but you'd, you'd find it by going into the dashboard and doing the same process we just did. And maybe page uh, 82. And now this code will appear in the header of these three pages and none of the others. You want it in the footer or before the closing body tag, just change this WP underscore footer. And you can also have other bits of information in here. All of this is detailed on the blog post. If I click on here under this help page, it shows you how is page works and you can include lots of stuff. You can have the title of the page, you can have the slug of the page, lots of different options. Another important variation to this code is right here where we are including a link to a JavaScript file instead of putting JavaScript code directly into our functions file. The reason you want to do this, there's multiple. One is to keep your functions file clean and organized. The other, which is related, is to make sure that if you have big chunks of JavaScript code, that they are not cluttering up your functions file. Because when you look through your functions file, you want it to be clean. You want to be able to find what you're looking for as fast as you can. You don't want a bunch of code to be looking you in the face. So if we copy this and we put it into our functions file, just paste that in right there. And I'm going to delete this one because we're all done with that. And this is the code we just put in right here. This also has the if statement already included for a page ID. If you want the JavaScript code to appear on all pages, just remove this curly bracket, this curly bracket, and the if statement. Now to load this on every single page. And all you have to do is put the path to the file right here. The path being where the file is located. So if you have your file, let's go back out here. Let's say we have a folder inside our child theme. Here's our child theme right here. We want to put a new folder in here. Let's call it JS. And then we want to put a JavaScript file in here. Let's call this alert.js. Select it, click edit. We're just going to add a simple alert, which is going to be a piece of text that pops up or the pop-up that pops up when this file loads. It's going to say it worked, exclamation, and then save. And so this will pop up saying it worked if this file is actually loading. And now to find the path to this file, we can basically just use what we have here, wpspeedify.com forward slash wp-content forward slash themes forward slash ocean wp-child forward slash js. Copy that, and we paste that into our functions file and replace path.js file with it. Let's paste that right in there. Let's add our HTTPS at the beginning or HTTP if you don't have an SSL. And let's add the actual file name. This takes us to the folder where the file is. We need to add the actual file name, which in our case is alert.js. And then we save it. Then we go to our website again and refresh and there we have our alert, it worked. So that file is now being included on every single page. And that's how easy it is to add JavaScript files. And what we have right here puts this code into the header of your website or the head section. So if we just copy this, let's just confirm that's true. Let's copy that, go back out to the website. Let's close those source code ones, open the source code again. Commander control F, search for it. Here's our code, alert.js. And that is in the head section. Let's scroll down, find the opening head tag. There it is, or closing head tag, sorry. There it is right there. So that's in the head section. If we want it to appear in the footer or before the closing body tag, change the false to true, save it, refresh, do the search again. And now it's down here. And if we scroll down, we'll see the closing body tag eventually. There it is at the very bottom. So that's how we can add to the bottom of the site code or the start of the site code by changing this to false or true. We can also use, like we have in the original code here, the if is page ID. So we include it just on a single page, multiple pages. You can include it on just the home page. Wherever you need to include this, this JavaScript code, you can include it just by changing this if. And that's all there is to replacing the snippets plugins. That's pretty much all there is. Now, one last thing that you might want to do, I'm just gonna delete this and save it, 
is before you start working in the functions file, you might want to back it up. So here's the functions file. Let's pretend we haven't started yet. I'm just going to click on, or right click on it, click on copy. I'm going to copy this to forward slash functions backup.php. And now we have it right here. This is a backup. So if something goes wrong while you're messing around in the functions file, you can just delete this functions file by going delete, the one that will be broken in the future, possibly, hopefully not, but maybe. Delete the backup from the functions file. Now I've got the original functions file back online. The worst that'll happen is when you work in the functions file, something goes wrong, your site goes down for a minute or two, and you either replace your functions file with the backup, or you can just remove the code that caused the problem. Some things that can cause problems like this are very minor. If you don't have this quote there, or this quote here, or this comma, or this colon, all those things can take your site down. So when you're copying this code, make sure you're copying it in its entirety. And you when you're replacing things like path to JS, make sure that the quotes are still there. If you're working too quickly, it's not hard to select that quote as well and just have the entire site go down because it's missing one quote. So if that happens, either look at the code and try to identify what went wrong or revert back to your backup file and then try again. As I mentioned in the beginning, this tutorial is part of the plugin killer series where I show you how to get rid of plugins on your site and replace them with code or other processes. It doesn't always require code, but I have a whole playlist of this right here full of tutorials on how to remove plugins from your site. So check that out. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.